Guyana has two faces. Its Caribbean face shows the features of a country locked into underdevelopment, unable to exploit the potential of its huge hinterlands. But Guyana's other face shows the features of a continental hinterland, which has another history entirely, the history of the first peoples who have been largely left behind in the modern world. Thanks to George Simon, the 2012 Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Arts and Letters, a member of the Lokono First People's Nation, both these faces may become better known and enrich our understanding of who we are and where we live. Simon is a painter and an archaeologist whose work in both areas has been path-breaking. Most recently, he was part of an expedition which made a discovery which might rewrite the history books about complex civilization in South America, which existed thousands of years before the Christian era. The source of these discoveries is in a series of mounds between the Berbis and Quarantine rivers. These mounds are, are literally, um, they're, they're man-made and they were used in, in pre-Columbian times for planting uh, agricultural fields. These are fertile soil taken from uh, creeks, uh, tributaries of this river, and uh, placed on higher ground. They had the, obviously um, working on this for, for, for thousands of years from the or recent um, radiocarbon date from one of these mounds, a back of Jubilee here, um, dates to 3000 BP. The mounds were first seen from the air by Major General Joe Singh in the 1980s. At that time, Simon was working as an artist turned archaeologist under the mentorship of the legendary Guyanese polymath, Dennis Williams. Their relationship began when Simon returned from England in 1977, where he had been trained as a visual artist. When I came back, I met Dennis Williams and he had just started the art school, the Borough School of Art. And, um, he invited me as a lecturer there, and I, I worked there until um, 85. When again, in the meanwhile, Dennis had moved on to establish what is called the Walter Roth Museum of Anthropology. In 85, uh, during that period, he was doing a lot of research in, in um, archaeology, principally in the Northwest, looking at um, shell mounds. And um, he invited me over um, to the Walter Roth Museum to be his research assistant. The archaeological investigation began a project which would last more than 20 years and lead to a collaboration with U.S. universities and the collection of data which might change conceptions of pre-Columbian life in the region. George's find the significance of it is that it is bringing forth new knowledge. He's working along with Michael Heckenberger um, and Neil Whitehead. Um, Heckenberger is from University of Florida, Whitehead from Wisconsin. And they're working, they're working along with him. They've been given a grant to do the excavations. The group has documented its findings and they are now being reviewed by academic journals. But while he waits for the results, Simon is taken up by his other pursuits, art and teaching. Looking at the work he's done in the last 20 plus years, he has done what ideally you want visual artists to do, or they would hope to do, which is to evolve. He's worked with artists in Chad, he's worked with artists in Haiti. He's been back and forth to Guyana, and everywhere he's gone, he has been impacted by the culture. Simon's achievements have been recognized in Guyana. He is highly thought of in artistic, academic, and government circles, but this recognition was earned at a great cost. One of the things I, I think that it's important to note in Guyana is that persons like George Simon, at the age group he is, was very special in terms of many Amerindian people of that generation did not have access to education. So the fact that George and a number of other, a very small number of Amerindians of Guyana were able to ha have access to education, be able to read the heights that they were able to was highly unusual. Simon was born at St. Cuthbert's, a Lakono community. His father died when he was three and he was adopted by an Anglican priest and taken to England, where he was able to access education. But he decided to return to Guyana in 1977 where he began a career as an artist. But there was also a strong impulse to help those not so fortunate. He tends to, to work with younger people and inspire them. He often works with students a lot. Students help him finish a mural, 
in public spaces, so they get the, the, the companionship, they get the example, they get the practice. And so he's very um, inventive and in that way and very generous in sharing his ideas and his, his experiences. Guyana is at the forefront where Amerindian art is concerned. And George is a leader in that. Not only a painter himself, but a leader. He, he has trained most of the leading Guyanese Amerindian artists. But Simon's greatest achievement is to ensure continuity in an important aspect of Guyana's heritage and to vindicate the faith placed in him by his mentor, Dennis Williams. Well, George, as a Guyanese, has taken over from Dennis Williams because he was the first Guyanese archaeologist. And we have, we have George now who is following in his footsteps and keeping up the work. He's one of the country's foremost artists. And what makes it, what makes that a greater impact is the fact that he's, he's living in Guyana. He has um, contributed significantly uh, to our development in Guyana. I think uh, you can regard Mr. Simon as a national treasure. For these reasons, Mr. George Simon, artist and archaeologist of the Lokono Nation of Guyana, is the Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Arts and Letters for 2012.